Second. Okay, the minutes are approved. And let's go on to our first and only presentation. And Bill, are we doing this? Yes. Good afternoon. Um, this is an update to open space regulations in the city of Asheville. My name is Vadila Satvika with the Planning and Urban Design Department. Um, this is coming to us, uh, doesn't have a forward. Um, here is a definition of uh, open space. We're not recommending uh, any changes to this, so I'll just let you read it. Um, but this, this first was brought to our attention that there was something broken with the open space standards shortly after we passed the infill uh, updates a couple years ago. Um, so we started working on this uh, 15 months ago, and it takes a little longer than a uh, brief overview on, on how I'll lay out this presentation. We'll look at proposed changes to residential infill, subdivisions, commercial properties, and then uh, some stormwater benefits that we're proposing. So first for residential infill, uh, these two blocks show the current regulations on the left and uh, proposed on the right. And I just want to call out two uh, big things. One here, uh, this is really what's broken. Current standards say that open space required is 500 square feet per unit or 15% of the parcel, whichever is greater. And it turns out that the 500 square feet per unit is almost always greater, a lot greater. In some cases, 35, 40% of the parcel. So it just completely undermines infill development. Uh, another is that we are proposing an incentive for good design, um, which really points to the importance of good open space. We don't need tons of it. We really need good accessible <coughs> open space that has seating. And so we're proposing, uh, in addition to these things, an incentive for all projects. Basically, you can go to 5% of the lot area in open space if you do really these things here. It's mostly all in one, one place. It's generally kind of a, a rectangular or normal shape. It's not really long. And straight in shape. Uh, it's basically flat and you provide seating. So we're saying you do these things and we should be able to see open spaces like this. They're, they provide more sociability um, and they can be small and really successful and this, this highlights how trees can be completely a part of these. They're not mutually exclusive at all. that they would do anywhere between 10 and 15, um, sorry, 5 and 10 percent uh, open space. So if, if, they, if they do the, the flat open space with seating, they can get away with just a smaller amount, um, but it's much more reasonable. And trees can be a part of the open space and they can be dropped uh, throughout the parcel. This, this is a sketch put together by the landscape architect that's showing in the yellow, the existing trees. There's one huge one here that they're um, kind of seeking to preserve. And then all the new trees are dotted around and, and these can be dotted around in the, the new space. Um, by the way, Chris Collins is here who is uh, shepherding through the tree preservation ordinance uh, regulations forward. So if any questions come up, he's here to let you know that um, how that's going. Now there, there, is, there is no conflict between these two. They're really measured on different planes. The tree canopy space that we're trying to create above all, all, all the, the area of what's happening down below and the open space is, is measuring the ground. Uh, this is another site in, uh, this is Montford. Uh, this hasn't been proposed. 
heard this yet, it's kind of working through some historic issues. Uh, but under today's regulations, they would be required to have this much open space. Um, and under our proposed, it would be more like 5 to 15% of the parcel. Again, this, this is uh, information from their landscape architect showing where they're proposing the trees, so they're really having um, seamlessly work, working together. Here is a larger uh, multifamily project in South Asheville that I believe is under construction to Sweetgrass. Um, this is showing the seven buildings, 248 apartments, and the hatched orange color is the open space that they're proposing that they will build. Um, a lot of it is on kind of a, an embankment that's, that's somewhat steep here um, and not really accessible. So our community is to change that. And you know the, the amount if they if they didn't do this, this uh, the incentive where they can get away with only five percent they would be required to build twenty percent which is really comparable to today's standard um, but in all likelihood they would they would do the smaller amount but still this this is this is a half acre park effectively what is what it is it's flat twenty benches uh, and it would have to be somewhere not necessarily in the center. It would be much more usable, and I, uh, we're thinking for, especially for multifamily, this is so much more important because these people uh, don't have a backyard to go to, and so the quality of open space is so much more important for multifamily. So, Vanilla, in, in terms of the multifamily, I mean, in, in, I feel like in several apartment complexes that I've been in, you know, for instance, they might, because in a lot of places, like, you can't have or anything, and so they have grills down, maybe on the ground that people can use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want that all there. I guess what I'm wondering is, in the multifamily, the good open space might actually might actually be better scattered around a little bit than all in one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you think about that? That's an interesting point. No, we didn't think about pit area versus the playground but that makes sense right or you know like the in between the buildings the sort of open the open spaces that are in between the buildings that mm -hmm. sort of give it a little more right you know, well this incentive would require that 70 percent of the open space is in one area and so it doesn't it doesn't that. That split yeah. yeah so they, 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 they could break it off does it say at least 70 percent or does it i mean can you put it on can't, yeah. yeah. So, in this case, you said 20 benches, meaning, um... It's a, it's a per linear foot, I think it's one linear foot per 250 square feet of area. Okay, so, I mean, it's hard, that looks, right there, looks small to me, and 20 benches seems like a lot, yeah. but I, would it be? <laughs> no, it's a, this is a half acre, this would be a half acre. Oh, so it's a half acre yeah. if you put this, this is down. reasonable. Okay. Yeah, very right. reasonable. All right. So, uh, and this is again showing trees scattered everywhere, and, um, you know, integrated. So, for subdivisions, uh, here are the current proposed uh, uh, changes. Uh, and I'll call out, really the big change is that we're requiring that at least one part of the open space must have 40 feet, um, 40 feet along the street frontage. And the reason is because we, we've gotten a lot of these. Uh, this is what we get today, um, where they don't have to have frontage, so they basically, in many cases, have a little bit of access to open space that leads circuitously to some something in the back that for all intents and purposes is somewhat hidden and isn't really that accessible. Um, so we're, we're proposing that they have more frontage in the street so you could, even if you're part of the neighborhood, you, you really understand that this is the open space. Um, we're taking out the right of way from their calculation before people would submit, sometimes with the right of way included, sometimes not. So we're making it very simple and clarifying the language. So it kind of, it's a wash. You, you know, 
you have to provide more of your open space on the frontage where people want to keep that area for their, their homes. So it's prime real estate, but we're, we're taking out the right of way, so um, you know, it kind of balances that out. And the trees would fit. Um, you know, in this case, they would have street trees, but they would also have Now to commercial, uh, there is no real change here. Um, currently it's between five and 15%, and that's what we're proposing. This is uh, a Ingalls on Henderson Bill Road that could see a reduction up to 5% if they, if they went ahead and did this really higher quality open space. And trees could be all part of that, or part of the landscaping in the parking lot that's not really the open, open space as we see it as, as this uh, project. To give you some comparison where other cities stand, uh, you can really see this, uh, this is the broken part of the ordinance we're trying to fix today primarily. We're trying to fix that and make, make the open space a lot So you know, you, they put in 
conceding, um, you know, to comply with the good design and make it comply with the fence. Um, what mechanism is there to make sure that that seating is maintained and retained? Um, good question. Um, well, it would be a zoning requirement to have that. So if it if it failed or they weren't taking care of it, we would probably get a, a complaint, and then we would issue a zoning violation. Um, I mean, I think but it's it, almost like somebody has to know that that was a rule, and then get a hold of the city. Right, right. I mean, it isn't inherent, like, in there, on there. Right. Well, I think they'll find out, like people do, about all things that they can complain about. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we intentionally set the triggers for um, projects that are large enough that already have some maintenance component. Um, so for subdivisions, you have to be eight or more, which is typically um, the number of units that stormwater and a stormwater infrastructure so they're going to have an HOA anyway if it's multi-family it's, it's going to be managed it's going to have a you know a management company that will if it's in their best interest to keep them up okay thanks so this is this is mainly about design which I am uniquely unqualified to pass judgment on um, so a couple, couple questions number one is there, does the ordinance contain any kind of flexibility? So we know that every site is different. We know that we want high quality open space. And what that looks like on some sites might look different on other sites. So are we building, and I'm, what comes to mind is that um, in subdivisions, that sort of requirement that it have 40 feet on the, you know, and, and as I think you said, in most places that would cost somebody a lot, which is, About, thinking about my own subdivision, there's a you know there's like a 15 foot path, maybe not maybe not even that, but that goes down to the open space that's then behind our houses, which works perfectly well for us anyway. Um, so I I I, I always I'm, I'm, I think rules are good. I think flexibility is also nice. So is there any flexibility for people to come in and say we realize this is what it says, but we think for our site this is better? Yeah. Um, well, we definitely boiled it down to what we thought were the most kind of basic requirements that would would be necessary to have a good good open space. Basically, that it's relatively flat, so most people can access it. That it has seating, um, and that it's in one area. Um, so we we had a lot of other things before. We had types of seating, mixing formal and informal back, no backs stones um, and we got rid of all that um, so I think it is a lot very flexible the, the question about the frontage um, well you can't really get up it's not an, a free lot the 40 feet because you would still need at least your 15 feet right um, so you're not quite getting a, a, you're not quite not quite giving up a, a lot what, what's the 15 feet um, you were saying like you you have a 15 foot entrance to your open space, yeah, so or maybe even 10 or something. Else. Right. So even if it's even if, if it's 10 and we're left over 30 feet, the point is you need some some access. Right. Um, so that I see that argument, and, and you know we could we could go back to that again. But the concern was these these strange open spaces right. that are basically more hidden. And so trying to make it so that there are more eyes in the street and kind of a, an easier, more formal type of a park space. Yeah, and I, I, I get that, I get that interest. I'm just in the, in the situation I'm thinking about it. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so then my second question is, again, because this is all about design and that's not what I do. Um, have you just, who, what sources have you been using for this? Have you, have you been using ULI and Smart Group America and all of the sort of super cutting edge progressive sources on open space? Yes. Um, uh, a lot of my previous work um, was uh, running the New York City Plaza program, which was really about deciding how to make open spaces successful. And, and a lot 
of that research was based on the project for public spaces that was based on Holly, Holly White's research from the 50s that was really pivotal in kind of this whole movement. So I tried, we tried to extract a lot of information from that. Um, but again, we, this, isn't, this isn't like a very intricate code. It's kind of saying you have to, if you're going to reduce your open space, you just have to make it flat, provide some seating, and that's really it. So it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty flexible. But I mean, we are also just reducing the open space requirements generally, which I, you know, I, I just, and I get it. I mean, I, I've been one of the, you know, louder voices in terms of the frustration that the missing middle stuff is happening the way we thought it was going to. So if this fixes that, that's great. Um, or if this is one of the things that helps fix that, I think that's great. I just, I, I want to, you know, I, I want to make sure that, you know, sort of years from now we're not going to be like oh wow we really screwed up there because what was really important actually was air and light <laughs> and we let right. people not do much air and light yeah I, I don't know i mean it's well it's this is definitely you know opening up a little bit to make it easier for people to do the infill so right there is so that you know uh that risk or that concern yeah um but we've seen some specific examples where people can't build what we're, what we're trying to build. And it's not like they're, you know, 15-story towers. This right. is a two-story right. family, 12, 12 unit building. So I don't think we need to worry too much that we've gone too far yet. Maybe we review it in a couple of years and, and see what's happening. And you've taken this to APAC, Urban Forestry. Urban Forestry is okay with it? They just said yes. Uh, they, they uh, at the Planning and Zoning Commission, one of their members came and said that they aren't in support of it, but not. they didn't, or not, but at, at their meetings, they didn't say that, so um, that was a little, that was strange. Um, I mean, we tried to make it clear that there is no conflict between the uh, upcoming tree preservation ordinance, but there's, I think there's just a general concern of more infill.